guys, hope you guys are well, hope you guys are getting through your syllabus and your classes online. Uh, I know it can be difficult uh, to study online and virtually, but uh, I trust you guys are getting through it, that you guys are learning a lot, that you guys are taking it all in and that uh, you're having fun and enjoying your, your course. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself um, so you guys can put a face to the name before we go to the notes and before we, we go through all, um, all the theories and, and, and the notes. But yeah, I just wanted to say um, I'm, I'm excited, I'm privileged to be giving a, a, a lecture on this. Uh, I'm very excited and passionate about plumbing and about technology and about um, just new systems and stuff coming out. So um, I'm excited to be sharing with you guys. Um, yeah, my name is Frank Christofuli. I've been in the plumbing industry for about 13 years now. Um, I started off as an apprentice at uh, Rivers Projects and Plumbing Services. I still work for the company today, 13 years later. I am one of the, the directors and general manager of the company and I, um, uh, I've, I've done a couple of um, courses in hydraulics and pipe work and I've become a qualified plumber, I've become uh, a solar specialist, heat pump technician, um, I've done a couple of business degrees as well so yeah I just wanted to to let you know that um, you know plumbing is, is a relevant field that uh, is always advancing, there's so much technology going into it, there's so much um, uh, um, uh, resources being pumped into it for us to you know save energy save water and and to to do the best we can and do the best practices we can in the industry so yeah I'm excited to 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 uh, go through the notes with you guys and um, if at any point you guys have any questions or anything you can send them through to me but uh, yeah just pause the video there's tons of stuff on YouTube there's tons of stuff online uh, you can pretty much find out anything. So yeah, let's get to the notes and uh, enjoy the day, guys. Hey guys, so we're going to kick off with um, the first module, um, which is we're going to talk into um, cold water pipes, hot water pipes, and some sanitary fittings. Um, so let's talk about cold water first and let's just um what i want you guys to think about is how do where do we actually get water from you know and just think about when you open a tap or when you you know go use the bathroom or take a shower where's that water actually coming from um yeah and just think about that and 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 think about you know how much water do we use or lose in a day just um, you know by, by different ways of um, you know leaving taps running or leaving things running or or maybe just you know being careless or over watering or whatever you know how much water can we save and how much water can we lose and um, I just wanted to show you uh, I wanted to go through some pipes and I've, I've, I've set up um, another camera just to show you how different pipes look and how different pipes are used in the, in, in the plumbing field and uh, I'll go through them and most of these pipes can be used for hot and for cold um, so I mean there's a there's a a, a really really l huge amount of material available to us there's a huge amount of different materials for for different um, jobs like solar and like um, heat pumps and dewatering and, and it's just impossible for us to go through every single fitting and every single um, make of pipe and uh, um, but you can find all of this online so yeah I want to start with a um, I want to start with pipe called um, an HDPE pipe okay so um, these are materials that are commonly used for water pipes um, so this HDPE pipe um, looks like this it is a it is a standard um, plastic pipe high density polyethylene pipe 
and as you can see it's just got it's just a black pipe doesn't have anything inside and these these pipes are normally used um, to run mains outside you cannot put this pipe in the sun the UV will corrode it and it will uh, eventually burst um, but these pipes are, are cheaper than copper and they are cheaper to run underground and so normally we run our mains outside and then we come into the house um, when you get into the house um, there's pipes like um, galvanized pipes which look like this it's a galvanized steel pipe which gets threaded um, it looks like it looks like this this is a T piece this is a piece of galvanized pipe and basically what what happens is and I'll show you the construction and I don't want to spend too much time constructing um, a lot of pipes but I will show you this one um, it gets it gets hemmed up or some some um, some plumbers like to use plumbing tape which is a white tape but it gets hemmed up like this I'm left-handed so I do it in and in an anti clockwise way gets hemmed up and then what happens is that hemp gets a fitting screwed onto it like so and once that fitting is screwed on when the water gets switched on the hemp swells and stops it from leaking that's a that's a closed up joint already made. Um, that's a galvanized pipe. These are used commonly in homes. These are used in buildings. These are used um, for fire services, for fire lines. It's quite a common pipe and it's not, it's not really expensive. Um, then we've got a copper pipe, which looks like this. And this is a copper fitting and I've especially got a dirty piece of copper which has been lying around because I want to show you 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 cannot work with a pipe like this you need to clean it this is a pipe copper pipe cleaner and you need to clean it until the copper is shining throughout okay and this is probably until the copper is shining throughout like that and then what happens is the fittings get you flux it you put a special chemical that cleans the pipe and you put it on both sides and you solder the pipe now this is a piece of copper what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up links um, with this with this video I'm going to put up links on how to join copper how copper gets joined how galvanized gets threaded and cut and and I mean all these pipes I'm going to give you links on how um, how they get joined and how they actually work um, another way an easier way for to for you to join copper it's a little bit more expensive because the fittings are more expensive but sometimes if there's water in the pipe you cannot solder the pipe the solder won't join and um, it's impossible to solder a copper pipe if there's water in it so they developed a fitting called a Koenig fitting which looks like this and you it's got a it's got a the, the body of the fitting it's got a ring and it's got a nut that tightens so you've got the nut you put the ring over put the body on and then you tighten the fitting and this can this can be put on while the water is live obviously not under huge pressure um, and then you tighten it up and it'll seal the pipe so that's a Konex fitting um, yeah so that's copper we've gone through galvanized we've gone through copper we have spoken to you about a Plasson HDPD pipe these are the newer newer pipes that are coming out this is a multi-layer pipe it is a 
um, exactly what it's, this is called Mepla, but it is, it is multi-layered. If you look here, it's got a, um, a clear plastic layer, then it's got an aluminium layer inside, and then it's got a black layer. Um, these pipes can be bent, these pipes can be uh, run long distances without fittings. Um, they're a little bit, this particular pipe, Mepla, is, is quite expensive. It comes um, with a big guarantee and it comes um, from a company called Kibberit. It's, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a really, really good quality pipe. And um, it can be used uh, almost all over and um, can hold a lot of pressure, hot water, cold water and um, it's easy to work with. So I just want to show you this. This is, while the, other, while the copper fittings you need to put flux in solder, this is a metal pipe and what you do is you take a fitting and you just push the fitting in and then you've got a special machine and you crimp over it. And then your crimp just crimps like that, very quick to use, very easy. So on some pipes the material's cheaper but the labor's more, on others the labor's uh, cheaper but the material's more expensive. Um, now I just wanna go through some valves. So what we have here, we have a isolating valve. Now these valves are normally found um, on a property as you're coming in or to the inside of a cottage or to, a, to the inside of a house and this allows you to close the water off. Uh, it's got a body inside and as you open it the water passes and as you close it the water stops. This is an isolating valve. Now most valves can take most fittings. So all our fittings in, in, in South Africa um, come in standard sizes. There are some odd ones that are imported but most of our fittings come in standard sizes and these these fittings can be fitted. This is a galvanized fitting which can be screwed in there. This is a galvanized bush can be screwed in just like this. Obviously you use whichever jointing compound you use. Um, this is a Mepler fitting that screws in there um, and so, if you want to use Mepler, you use Mepler. If you want to use copper, you would take a copper fitting and you would screw that in there and then you would join your copper pipe. Now, some pipes are not good to be joined with others um, because of the, the way that they corrode and the reactions that they have because of the chemical, uh, the material compositions, but that's a lecture for another day. Um, yeah, so that's an isolating valve that allows you to close the water. This is a pressure valve. This controls the pressure coming into the building or the house. So basically, um, this will control our incoming pressure from the municipality, which will allow us to control how much pressure we have in the house. And this will help you to not have burst pipes or have any um, fluctuations in pressure. This will balance the system out. So basically what happens is the water comes in and this, this pressure valve has got a built-in isolating valve over here. You can see, I don't know if you can see it in there, as I, as I open it, it opens, as I close it, it closes. So this valve, this particular valve, has got this isolating valve built in and um, um, there's different ways to join see this is a this is a conex pressure valve which means I can take this pipe copper put it in tighten this nut and it'll work if it was galvanized I would need a thread um, or a socket or something placed on there so there's there's many different ways in in, on this particular valve, this is a 400 kPa valve. That means that this valve is um, drops the pressure, whatever the incoming pressure is from the from the street, from the municipality, it will drop the pressure with a series of 
springs and, and, and diaphragms inside the valve, it will drop it down to 400 kPa and it will allow my system in the house to run at 400 kPa. And I'll explain pressures, um, pressures and the way the system works later, but I just wanted to show you that. Um, and, and just to, to keep that in the back of your mind. Then we've got safety valves, looks like this. This is a safety valve that what happens is this goes on a hot water tank um, and this will, when the thermostat or the electrical part of the geyser malfunctions, the geyser overboils and this white rod is made out of wax. What happens is the wax melts and it causes this valve to blow, to pop. So that your geyser doesn't overboil and blow up. It, it, it discharges the boiling hot water through here and this, there's an overflow pipe that goes out. And there's regulations to that as well, which, we'll, which I'll cover just now. Um, and then lastly, we've got, I just want to show you this. This is an This is a polycop pipe, which is a cheaper temporary pipe. This is just plastic um, and it just it can be run for temporary installations and for temporary jobs just to give you know give a, an ablution block water or there's some, some pipes have been stolen and they just run this quickly, quickly, easy to install and um, works easily but cannot cannot be left in the sun for too long, it will corrode, it will burst, and it's not a permanent installation pipe. But what I want you to see is, this is a Konex fitting, much like the one I showed you here, and um, the one on this valve. This polycop pipe joins with a Konex fitting, which is joined to a Plasson HDPE pipe, which is this black one. So there's many ways that the pipes can be joined together. Um, you could join copper on here, you could join, um, you could join galvanized on here. There's hundreds of different types of fittings and hundreds of different types of pipes. But most of the time you are guided by the installation, you're guided by where, you know, you can't put copper pipes somewhere where they'll be stolen because they're high risk pipe, you would use polycop. Also the client sometimes specifies a certain type of pipe that they need for a certain type of job and that's what you need to go with. So what I will put up, I'll put up links on how to um, on how to solder pipes, I'll put up links on how to thread galvanized, how to join galvanized, how to join HDPE and you can just literally type on YouTube how to do, how to solder a pipe, how to um, thread galvanized and um, there's tons of links that you can find there. I've gone through pipe work and valves and um, the valve types and the pipe work types and um, I just want to go through now on direct and indirect cold water systems. So I just I want to explain to you how a cold water system works and then we can move on to um, hot water and um, sanitary fittings but basically where does our cold water come from where does our cold water come from in the house so what you have is you have a water meter in the street and a water meter looks like this um, basically as the as the water comes through um, It'll count and it'll tell you how much water you use. Normally there's, normally there's one of those isolating valves here and the water comes into the house and then it goes, um, it goes either up or straight or it goes to the garden or it goes 
upstairs. So what I want to draw for you, just so that you understand this, if, if you were to look at your house from the side, if it was a double story, it would look something like this. There's your little roof, and um, your house would look something like this. Okay, from the side, we're looking at it like a little doll's house. Okay, um, what happens is the water comes in, comes up, and for a direct system, for a direct system, the main feed over here feeds everything directly. So if you've got a kitchen sink with a tap, the cold water will feed that tap directly. If you've got a bathroom upstairs with a basin and a tap, it will feed it directly. If you have toilet, it will feed the toilet directly so that is a direct cold water feed uh, that is a direct system and it takes pressure and it takes uh, water directly from the from the municipality now here is where that 400 kpa valve that i spoke about earlier comes in is that if if the pressure coming in from the municipality if the pressure is too high for your pipe work and for your system it will blow your taps it will blow your uh, toilet systems it'll start cracking valves it'll start cracking pipe work so what we do is we come in through the meter we have a valve so the meter in the street we have a valve or for in that other valve in particular it's got that little valve it built in and then you have the PRV, which is a pressure regulating valve or pressure reducing valve. And that would reduce this so that you don't burst all your pipes and blow all your pipes. Um, so that is a direct system. Now an indirect system, an indirect system is very similar in that we've got our little house. We've got our house here, we've got another floor. The thing is about an indirect system, it is made for when there's not enough pressure in the area or at peak times you don't have enough pressure the upper floors don't get water because everybody in the community is using the water and so you left without water on your upper floors. And so what happens is, and I will just for a minute explain, um, explain pressure. So what happens is the water comes in, we've got our meter, we've got our valve and what happens is we've got our pressure regulating valve that gives us um, that drops the pressure to four bar but if we don't have that pressure it can't drop it so sometimes the municipality pressure drops too much and you don't get any water and if you look at this on that valve it said 400 kPa which is equal to four bar it's just a different rating so for every one bar, I get one meter of, uh, sorry, for every one bar, I get 10 meters of pressure. So if, if, if my house was 20 meters high, I would need two bar of pressure or 200 kPa. So basically, if I don't have that, my sink and my toy, my sorry, my basin and my toilet that I drew earlier won't get pressure. So if this goes up 
here's my sink with my tap so my sink is okay because it's lower down so it gets pressure but if if the upper floors are not reach are not getting pressure because the the, the pressure is too low um, then if if my upper floors are not getting pressure because the pressure is too low then we use an indirect system so what happens is on that same cold main we take another pipe up to a tank and this tank fills up with water and then gravity feeds down to the toilet and to the basin now this tank can't get full during the, the times that people are using water but at night when everybody goes to bed the pressure rises and the water goes through here goes through here goes up fills up our tank fills up our tank with water and then tomorrow it's ready for use. So those are the differences between a direct and an indirect cold water system. Okay, so we're going to talk about hot water now and uh, hot water distribution systems and hot water in the house or in, in your building or whatever you guys are designing. And um, you know, we don't often think about hot water um, until we don't have any and we're freezing, you know, and we're having a cold shower and then you quickly realize how important hot water is to you. Um, but, but, you know, again, what I want you guys to think about is when you when you opening up a tap and there's just hot water there for you, um, how does that hot water get heated? And do, um, do you know where it comes from? And how, what are the, what are the ways in which we can heat hot water? Um, most of the time it's done by electricity somehow. Um, no matter what type of system you use, there is most of the time an electrical element to it that would um, either power it up or heat it up in some way. So there's always a cost to heating hot water. Um, but yeah, so, so what is a hot water distribution system um, that is exactly what it what it says it is a system that distributes hot water and so um, well how do these systems work well basically for in this country in South Africa a common a common um, hot water method that we use is a geyser which is just a tank that um, gets piped with cold water the water gets heated up and then it goes out through a hot water pipe so basically that is like a big huge kettle that is pretty much geyser if you could explain it's a it's, it's a closed off tank that is uh, gets cold water it gets heated up by an element and then hot water comes out so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the basic most basic um, hot water system which is pretty much a geyser and what happens is you've got cold water coming in and that cold water gets heated up by an element and then that hot water leaves the tank to a tap or whatever you're using now in here there's an there's there's an element um, but you could put whatever you wanted to in there and there's lots of different ways um, to heat hot water I mean you could take when you're putting a pot on a fire you are heating water I mean it's that you're using fire, the wood, the heat of the fire to heat the pot. If you had a big tank with a pipe, you could essentially put that up over a fire or build a fire around it and it would heat. And when you open the tap, you'd have hot water. Now, the, the question is, well, what methods do we use in this country and what methods are the most efficient? That's what I want you to think about. Because if you do light a fire, how do you control it? Doesn't it get too hot? What if, you know, how do you control that heat um, from overboiling? How do you control it from 
you're throwing too much energy into the system and you don't use it. So what we do here, and I want to read this to you, there's regulations in this country that govern the way we do plumbing and we pipe systems and we do hot water and um, it's called the SANS standard. And in this, this particular code I want to read to you, it's SANS 10400XA. It talks about the building regulations in this country for hot water heating. And it says, this, this application of the national building regulations, its energy usage in buildings specify that at least 50% of the volume of hot water shall be provided by means other than electrical, um, electrical heating or electrical resistance heating. That could include solar, heat pumps, heat recovery from other systems. So basically, in short, what what that regulation is saying is that now what we need to do is have 50% of our hot water heating must come from renewable energy. That means it mustn't be direct electrical consumption. So, well, how do we do that? So basically, you can have a heat pump, which is, it is almost works like a air con, but in reverse, it takes, it takes the temperature from the air and puts it into the heating system and then it produces hot water. You could have gas heating, um, you could have solar heating which takes this energy from the sun and heats the water, um, it heats the water on the roof and then brings it down into your tank and assists the tank in heating up um, and then it saves you energy and saves you power. So I will, I will be putting up links because there's so many different types of systems, um, and I'll I'll run um, I'll I'll give you links for those videos. Um, but for now, I just want to show you in short. Basically, if we had this geyser, and we were to put um, solar into it, we would buy a modified geyser, which is an indirect geyser, and it would have another coil. And what would happen is we would have so a solar panel and this the heat of the sun would come into that panel and there would be a pump small pump and it would come into the system and it would circulate through here giving it bringing in the heat and so it would bring the energy from the sun would come in come down to heat this water which is around the coil and it will heat up the water for us and so there's many different ways in heating there's even tankless heating which is instant heating which basically works in a way that only when you draw off the water the the electrical heater which is a tankless instantaneous heater would it would put energy into the system as you open the tap and it will heat the water as it goes. We have instantaneous gas geysers as well, which do the same thing. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages to all the different types of systems. So where electrical, the disadvantage is obviously the cost. There's, it's always reliable. If you've got the money and you pay for power, you will always have hot water. Um, but it's going to cost you and in the years to come as energy gets more expensive um, it'll cost you more and more money with solar the cost is less but the what are the disadvantages well if it's an overcast day you can't rely on the solar to completely heat up your hot water um, so there's 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 lots of uh, advantages and disadvantages so what I want you to think about is um, so what I want you to think about in terms of energy saving is we need to when we design a system to when we design a house or when we design a building we need to take a look at well what is going to be the most energy efficient way to set up this hot water system and um, I've put up different um, ways and different 
methods of distributing hot water, which is um, this this which is there's different ways to um, distribute the hot water within the building, which also can save you energy. But I'm talking about the the, the energy source. So we need an electrical element which is a backup so often we do installations which use electrical elements and your geezer at home and and your system at home is run off an electrical element but that costs um it costs a lot of money and power so basically what solar does and what a heat pump does is it takes the same amount of money you would have spent to generate energy and it gives you more energy out of that same amount of money. So if I had one rand or one kilowatt of energy, a geyser will produce me one kilowatt of hot water. But a heat pump, when I put in one kilowatt of energy, or in rand's value, it will give me three to four times more because of the components and the, the equipment that it's made out of. So what a heat pump does is it takes the energy out of the air takes the heat out of the air, puts it, into, um, puts it into a heat exchanger, which exchanges heat from the ambient air into a pipe. And then that pipe heats up your tank. And so while a heat pump and the solar installation costs significantly quite a bit more than just installing a conventional geyser, it gives you more, um, gives you more energy per rand while it is running. So the capital investment cost is higher, but the running costs are much lower. Um, and I've put up links there on tankless heaters, solar heaters, solar geysers, um, heat pumps. And I'll take a look at those because every day there's new technology coming out and there's new ways to heat water. And um, the fundamentals stay the same, but the way and the efficiencies that, and the way that we're doing it um, is getting really really advanced so yeah take a look at those those links are up as well so I've pretty much shown you a geezer I've shown you solar geezer I want to just show you how an instantaneous water heater works and basically it is very simple it has it is a unit that you put on the line so this is my cold water line coming in it's a unit that just takes cold water in and it has an electrical element inside it. So I use, I use electricity and I power this and inside there's an element. And when that cold water comes in, only once I open the tap on this side, only once I open the tap, on this side as soon as I open this element engages and then it's, it begins to heat up it begins to instantly heat up this water and it makes it hot and then it comes out of our tap hot and it's just a simple way that um, that's a simple way to heat hot water. Um, it is, again, there's advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage is if you're out of power, you've got no hot water. Whereas a geezer that you've stored hot water in will already have had that hot water ready for you. So if there's no power, then you're still okay. You've got 100 or 200 liters stored up. With instantaneous, if, you, if there's no power, you cannot heat. You get gas instantaneouses, you get um, um, different types, um, but fundamentally they need power to heat up, some sort of energy source to heat up. Well, this part, we, we just, uh, we in my laundry here, and um, just want you guys to think about what rooms do you guys have sanitary wear in? You know, we're going to be talking about sanitary wear and appliances and um, what rooms do you have water in in your home? What rooms do you need water in? And, uh, and 
what is the difference between sanitary wear and an appliance? So, I mean, here we've got, um, here we've got a stainless steel sink, which is our um, laundry sink. And underneath, in the cupboard, we've got the, the pipe work and all the fittings that go with it. Um, we've also got um, a washing machine, We've also got a washing machine and tumble dryer which use um, water and they use um, waste to get the, 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 the washing done. And I just want to show you the different types of um, materials that are used. So in our laundry we've got a stainless steel sink but in our kitchen we've got a composite sink which is made out of like a fiberglass graphite type material and most of the time um, I just want to show you the bathroom in, a, in, in our bathroom we've got the toilet or the WC is made out of porcelain um, and this particular toilet the cistern is in the wall um, you get external cisterns you get concealed cisterns um, most most of the time taps are brass and basins and toilets and baths are made out of um, porcelain, as you can see here. But the, the, what I want you to see is now that we have, in South Africa, we have a lot of suppliers, we have a lot of um, importers, we have a lot of people um, bringing in different types of sanitary wear and different types of components. And so, Back in the day, we were limited to porcelain only most of the time, uh, but sanitary wear now has become really extensive. You can pretty much get anything, you know, stone sink, a uh, made out of stone, made out of cement, made out of marble. Um, so you're really not limited to uh, what what material um, the components are made out of. Um, Now, what, what normally, the note that I want to give you is that normally sanitary wear and, and fix, uh, sanitary wear and sanitary fittings like a bath, like a toilet, like a sink are normally fitted and fixed. They are fixed, they're bracketed in, they've got pipe work that goes with it, they've got um, um, a bunch of fixed um, fittings so it can't really be moved easily it can be moved but not easily whereas an appliance a fridge or a microwave or even an oven can be moved really quickly and it's, it's not fixed and fitted um, yeah so there's lots of different there's lots of different ways um, to do your sanitary wear there's lots of different ways to um, install sinks and install and have concealed toilets and have concealed baths and bathrooms and there's there's many different options but the fundamentals are um, always the same they need water they need waste and they need to be fitted um, and they need to be um, fitted as per the regulations